Today, we're going to talk about how to give better gifts to coffee people. This will be a little bit different to your traditional gift guide video. I won't be giving you a bunch of very specific recommendations because these kind of videos are kind of redundant and obsolete in six to 12 months time. I want to talk about the framework behind thinking about what's a great gift for someone at a certain stage in their coffee hobby or career, potentially. This isn't just for Christmas. This is for any occasion in which you might need to buy a coffee person a lovely coffee gift. It could be a birthday, anniversary, graduation, you name it. But this gift guide should be appropriate for all of the above. Let me explain how it's going to work. We're going to talk about three theoretical recipients at different stages of their coffee journey. They'll be the beginner, someone who thinks they kind of want to get into coffee as a hobby. They'll be the kind of intermediate, someone who knows they're going down the rabbit hole and is getting more and more into coffee as a hobby. And then at the other end, there is the serious hobbyist, hardcore coffee person. For each of the three, there'll be three different price points, something at the more affordable end of things, something that would be kind of intermediate in price, and then something a little bit more, the kind of blowout gift for someone truly very special. Now, when it comes to things that I think are great gifts for coffee people, I have a number of conflicts and there's a few things that I do want to talk about. And so what we're going to do is confine that stuff almost like we're sponsoring our own video. There'll be a little section a little bit later on that will be truly absurd and I hope very enjoyable, where we'll cover that stuff, but the rest of the time should be pretty conflict free. Now, as an added bonus to this video, we also surveyed my Patreon community, there's several thousand people there, about the worst gifts that they've received, things that they would recommend you don't purchase. I was kind of asking the question of what are the whiskey stones of the coffee world, the thing that is a thoughtful, intentional gift that turns out to be a little bit of a burden on the recipient. Anyway, right now, let's start with the beginner. This is someone who is right at the start of their coffee journey. They have decided they really like coffee and they're interested in pursuing it a little bit more, but they're really, really early on in their coffee journey. As a result, I would say a good, relatively cheap gift is something like coffee books or magazines. There's more and more coffee magazines out there with some really interesting and diverse content. Something about those different styles may appeal to them more. There's a ton of different coffee books out there now, and I have to say a lot of them are truly fantastic. Uh, and I think it's a nice gift. It's usually a beautiful thing to own. It's a nice reference thing, and it can really kind of deepen someone's appreciation for coffee. And they shouldn't really be breaking the bank. When it comes to a kind of medium priced gift, I would say this is a little specific, but a really good set of coffee scales is a wonderful thing to have and to receive. This would be something that does uh, weighing 2.1 of a gram, that has a timer built into it, that is an appropriate size to be able to have a brewer on top. It's ideally something like USB-C rechargeable. There's loads of options out there. I'm not saying you have to spend money on a smart scale because I think those are often very expensive and they don't really, I think, justify their cost. So I, I think a, just a good set of coffee scales is a really nice thing to receive and multi-purpose. Great for baking, great for cooking, all over the kitchen, scales are really useful. So if they're short a set of scales, that's a great gift. And now for the blowout gift. And I would say stay away from uh, any substantial investment in equipment because at this stage in their coffee journey, they're not really sure which way they're going to go. You don't want to get them, uh, you know, an espresso focused thing or a filter coffee focused thing at this point because that may not ultimately be their preference for coffee as a little bit of a hobby. What I think a truly great gift is at this stage is a class. It could be an espresso class or a brewing class or a tasting class. But I think really early on, it's great to give someone the gift of, you know, instruction and guidance and tasting with someone else. So there's loads of barista kind of course gifts out there in the world. Uh, loads of great companies, great teachers doing this stuff. They're not particularly expensive, though they can be a little bit more expensive. Uh, I would recommend those as a really great gift for a beginner because it really helps them understand their preference and give them some guidance about where their coffee journey may end up. Let's now move to the intermediate, someone who's really getting into coffee, going down the rabbit hole. These are the easiest and most fun people to buy for in this whole thing because they really are reveling in coffee and it's really easy to provide something that will just increase their appreciation and enjoyment of coffee. On the more affordable end, I would recommend something like a coffee cupping spoon or some fancy teaspoons, a nice little accessory that just complements their coffee routine. 
you know, if they're an espresso person, the teaspoons are great. If they're a filter coffee person or an espresso person, a cupping spoon is wonderful. There's loads of great ones out there. You can get them personalized or customized relatively cheaply too. I think it's a lovely gift to deepen their appreciation and enjoyment of coffee, and they can still use it to eat their cereal or whatever in the morning, or some fancy slurpy soups. But it's just nice. It's not too expensive. It's a really fun gift. And if they've got one already, no one's going to be mad at having another one too. This brings us to the intermediate gift level. And I would say, for someone like this, a new coffee brewer, be it a pour over cone, if they've got a, a, a sort of cone shaped brewer, get them a flat bed. If they've got a flat bed, get them a cone brewer. If they've got both, get them a steep and release brewer. If they've got that, give them a mocha pot or an AeroPress or something else. A new brewer is not that expensive. And at this point in your kind of coffee journey, everything is huge fun. And you know, a new thing to try to explore new flavors with only deepens your appreciation of coffee. Espresso people are a little bit trickier on that front, but I, I think a little bit like, you know, filter coffee people collect brewers, espresso people can kind of end up collecting tampers. And I think there's loads of ways to create a lovely custom tamper that's not crazy amounts of money, that does make enjoyable espresso and is a nice kind of piece of jewelry or something to enjoy or remember you buy. Now for blowout gifts, this is a little trickier. And I would say if you really want to throw some money at them, then upgrading a coffee grinder is usually a lovely thing to do. At this stage of deepening their appreciation for coffee, that may be something that is lagging a little bit behind and they might be having a little bit of analysis paralysis around it too. The good news is that there's loads of YouTube videos on coffee from wonderful coffee creators covering all the different kind of grinders at different price points that may allow you to kind of pick something that will upgrade their setup and fit with their style of brewing. You know, you'd need to be pretty close to someone to be spending grinder money on them. And so I would hope you'd understand a little bit about their coffee preferences, how they make coffee, where they're at in their journey. Again, if you're buying this kind of blind for somebody, that's a very generous thing, but I'm not sure necessarily appropriate. Now, before we get into what not to buy, well, there's a short section coming up now covering some things that we make that we might recommend. Here's some of the lovely coffee goodness you could be taking home today. Want to tell your family and friends just how weird you are about coffee? This mug is perfect for you. These coffee themed playing cards are perfect for some illegal gambling or a little bit of magic at a children's birthday party. Weighing your dose first thing in the morning, well these dosing trays make that job a dream, available in two sizes. How to make the best coffee at home covers the tips, tricks and essential information for a multitude of brewers so you can make the best coffee possible wherever you want, morning, day or night. This devilishly difficult coffee puzzle is perfect to while away the hours or bring the family together at holidays. Brighten up any room with one of our limited edition beautiful coffee prints. The World Atlas of Coffee is a perfect guidebook to the world of modern coffee, covering things like the history of coffee, the different countries that grow coffee, even a few tips and tricks to get the most out of it brewing at home. Different styles of espresso deserve different styles of cups. You could go for something light and bright in this light and bright cup, or something a little heavier and richer with these darker toned colours. So now that you've had a taste, there's no time to waste. Click the link down in the description below, don't be dilly dally and get on with it grab something amazing to take home today. I make no apologies. Let's talk about some of the things that my Patreon community have recommended as things to avoid when gifting things for coffee people. Number one, kind of funny or novelty mugs. I would say this would fall into the cheap coffee pun on the front kind of thing. Uh, I would say those are definitely to be avoided. Certainly anything of questionable humor, just don't gamble, just don't do it. Similar to the novelty mugs, I would also avoid any kind of posters, prints, things like that, that are, you know, but first coffee or death before decaf or, or just a kind of, you know, a, a cheap comedic line about coffee. All of those, I, I would just say, I would avoid those generally. Flavored coffee. Now, this might seem surprising, and it was a little bit surprising to me that these kind of people were receiving flavored coffee as gifts. Typically, flavoring is added to not the highest quality coffee because it will taste pretty much purely of vanilla or hazelnut or whatever flavor they've sprayed on it. These are not great gifts for coffee people because ultimately, they don't really taste of coffee. Similarly, avoiding coffee from Amazon is a pretty good idea. Now, Amazon actually stocks more and more good quality coffee, but it's not gonna be the freshest. And people who really care about coffee, care about it being fresh. If there's a brand that you know and like, buy it directly from the roaster. 
Every good roaster I know has a great online presence. You can buy directly from them. Just avoid Amazon because you have no idea how old that coffee is. And ultimately, well, let's just try and avoid Amazon. This was another surprise for me. Thermoses. A lot of them have been gifted thermoses and they feel like I have enough. There's not a thing I need more of. If I need a thermos, if at any point I need a thermos, I've bought it already because in that moment that I needed it, that problem was solved. It's not a thing that someone doesn't have but needs. So weirdly, avoid a thermos. Now this one, I can totally see the temptation, but I would say if someone's really into coffee, I would probably avoid buying them a beautiful, old, vintage, kind of almost decorative hand grinder. They are kind of cool and interesting, but most of them have not been well maintained, and the restoration project would be a lot of work, and even then, they're not particularly good at grinding coffee. So unless they are a collector of these things and they love them and they just want to own them as sort of museum pieces almost, I would avoid the old vintage style coffee grinders as gifts. Last two, uh, storage canisters and volumetric dosing things. I have had beef with scoops for a long time. Uh, I don't need to explain why, but if you are curious why I hate scoops, there's actually a link to a video down below. With storage canisters, this is also a thing that they've probably solved themselves a little bit like thermoses, and so this end becomes a kind of burden of another large thing to find a home for, unless they've obviously specifically asked for it, I'd avoid coffee storage canisters. Which brings us to the advanced, the serious hobbyist. Now, these are kind of some of the trickiest people to buy for, and so my recommendations here need to be tailored a little bit to knowing that person. On the more affordable end of things, I would say tasteful drinkware is great. If you look at the style of cups that they own, you should get a pretty good idea. Are they a kind of nice handmade ceramic, you know, stoneware kind of person? Do they like nice old vintage glass cups or other things like that? Coffee people always want more great drinkware. We always enjoy drinking out of a different mug that fits our aesthetic and our style. They can be picked up usually secondhand pretty cheaply or acquired new relatively cheaply. Uh, and just a little gift, again, uh, that will remind them of you can be a lovely thing. One quick note, if it comes to buying espresso cups for people, I would recommend the traditional Italian style kind of rounded base small cups. I would avoid what look like little mini coffee mugs. They'll have straight walls on the inside and a flat base at the bottom. They are very popular for some reason in department stores in particular. Lots of kind of heritage brands that do nice mugs will do these weird little espresso cups. Firstly, they're just too big. They're really usually like 90 to 120 mils. I guess okay if they're into lungos, but I would say different cups may be preferable. But a classic Italian espresso shape is just much nicer and more enjoyable to drink espresso out of, and that's what I would recommend hunting down if you're gifting an espresso cup to somebody. On the intermediate front, this can be a little tricky because the price point here moves around. It depends how generous you want to be at this price point. But I would say a coffee subscription for three months or six months, or if you're feeling generous, a whole year. But this is a great gift for a serious hobbyist because they always need more coffee. They'll have their coffee storage game sorted and locked down, so they'll be able to, you know, deal with coffee coming in every month even if they didn't buy it themselves. I would say no more than one bag a month for starters. Even if they go through 10 bags a month, they want to choose most of it. But having one bag a month turn up is a lovely gift to give. As for which roaster, well, just ask them next time you see them, which is the best roaster in the world to you? which is the best roaster in whichever country that you live in, and gift them a subscription to that roaster. Again, almost every great roaster around the world has a subscription offering, has a great online presence that will allow you to do this as a gift for three months or six months or however long that you would like to do it. Uh, and I think that's a lovely gift to give to someone who's going through, probably, quite a lot of coffee. And this brings us to the blowout gift for the hardcore coffee hobbyist. Now, I would say this is an opportunity to book them a one-on-one -on -one class with a serious coffee professional. At this point in their coffee game, they'll have a lot of things down, but there will always be something that they're trying to work on or understand better. And actually spending a couple of hours or half a day with someone who really knows their stuff is a great way for them to focus on their specific problems and really, again, kind of overcome some challenges or you know, fix a thing that's been bothering them or just have a chance to talk to someone who knows a bunch. It would let them fix exactly what they want to fix, focus on what they want to focus on, and it would be, I think, a ton of fun and a wonderful gift to give someone at that stage in their coffee journey. 
But now I want to hear from you down in the comments below. I want to know about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you are in your coffee journey and share with us the best coffee gift that you've ever received. Yeah, also, you can share the worst coffee gift if you feel up to it and you feel like it's a good warning that the community may benefit from. But I think we'd all really love some ideas and some suggestions down in the comments below. For now, I will say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.